We're here with Keegan Bradley, six-time PGA Tour winner, fresh off a of victory at the Travelers Championship. Keegan, how did it feel walking up the 18th fairway on Sunday, knowing what you had just accomplished? Yeah, I mean, the, the Travelers in Hartford was a tournament I grew up going to. It was my first PGA Tour event I went to, and it was sort of when I, as a kid, when I thought about playing the PGA Tour, I, I thought about playing at that tournament um, just because of, you know, where it is. And, uh, to be able to walk up 18 with the three shot lead, I, all my wins that I've had, I haven't had anything like that. Most of some of the playoffs, some of them have been, you know, I got on my car in 18 or whatever it is. So I really wanted to enjoy that moment. And I was so happy I got to be, got to do that. And you got to do it in front of your family. There's an amazing clip about, of your sons getting their own versions of the travelers trophy on the 18th green. Can you just talk about what it was like to celebrate with all of them there? Yeah, I mean, you 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 dream of stuff, and you dream of winning the tour, and you dream of you know a career out here, and then stuff like Sunday happens where you get to do all that, and then there's twenty to thirty family members there, and they're all they, it's all like it's it's if they won too. They're as excited as I am, and I get to sit back and watch their reaction as they get to hold the trophy, take a picture. Um, and it's just, it's stuff that it's like a bonus, the stuff that I've never thought about wanting and it, and it gets to, it gets to come true. And it's just, it's stuff that even guys that have won 10, 20 times on tour, maybe haven't been able to experience what I got to on Sunday. And you're a new England native. Can you just talk about the crowds in Cromwell and the reception from everyone in the area? Yeah, it's, um, it's something that I'm so proud of being from New England. And I know people in that crowd are, are from there too, and they're proud of that. And they get to watch somebody that grew up in this area, going through nasty winters, cold falls. And, and they know that it's not, you know, like it is growing up in Florida. And I appreciate all their cheering and their loud roars. Growing up as a New England sports fan, did you ever imagine being in this position? How, how can you even, you know, put it into words? Yeah, I mean, I right I always wanted to play the tour and I always, but I never just, I just wanted to make the tour really. You know, I never thought of what it would feel like to walk up 18 at Hartford with a packed crowd, you know, going crazy. And, you know, I, I always dreamt of playing in Fenway Park, playing in this Boston stadiums, and, um, you know, 99.99% of the people don't ever get to experience that. And I get, I got to experience close to that on Sunday. And, um, you know, the 10 year old kid in me was just, just couldn't believe it. And it looked like you had a bit of a trophy heist situation going on. Can you clear the air on what's happening there? Yeah. Well, so many times, a lot of these times when you win, the trophy is, it needs to be either kept to be engraved or you get a replica and they send it months later. And so many times I've gone, come home from winning and there's nothing there and you don't get to, you know, drink out of it or have the pictures of it. So I decided I'm just going to take it. And I, would, I was supposed to bring it back the next day. The, the travelers people are unbelievable people and they, they are hysterical and they've been nothing but over the top nice to me and my family for years. So there's some joking going on, but I was supposed to bring it back the next day and I sort of forgot, but uh, it's here with me in Detroit and we're going to try our best to get it back to him, but I'm lucky I got to uh, have it for a day, a couple of days. What were the celebrations like on Sunday evening? So I, everyone, I rented a house near the golf course and all my family came by and we were, you know, we had the trophy on the table. We were celebrating, we poured some drinks in it. We were ever having, you know, my mom was drinking out of it. My, my aunts, my uncles, everybody, my nephew, nieces. And, um, you know, it's one of those moments that I think it will impact our family. We'll remember that for the rest of our lives. And let's talk about your game a little bit. So you're obviously kind of firing on all cylinders. Um, game was in amazing shape with the travelers and now headed into the rocket mortgage classic what do you think um will be the key to competing just as well as you did last week this week well you know i love this course i love this tournament the you know the rocket mortgage is you know it's a really up and coming event it's new and i i just love coming here I, i'm not gonna lie i'm pretty tired but I'm, I'm excited to get back out there. Once the tournament gets going, you know, you get those juices going again and I'll be fine. 
yeah, you've won six times now, but how how many of those times have you played the next week and have you learned uh, about yourself and how you can recuperate from kind of that emotional high and go on and play another golf tournament? Yeah, I'm trying to give myself a little bit of a break. I, I was exhausted last night, but uh, I wanted to go out and have dinner with my caddy, and my agent Ben, and we and I probably should have, you know, not and gone to bed and got some rest. But I thought, you know what, you don't you don't get to experience these high moments of winning and the excitement. And I thought to myself, I'm just going to go and and go, you know, reminisce and have fun. And um, you know, it's it's. So I'm just trying to give myself a little break and uh, of, you know, it's not going to be my normal prep. I'm not going to do my normal drills before I play a tournament. It's just going to have to be, let's go out there and try to play our best with what we got. And we can't ignore the fact that you are playing some really good golf during a Ryder cup year. So could you just talk a little bit about what it would mean to make that Ryder cup team come September? Yeah. I mean, there was, there was years where, I thought I was going to play in every Ryder Cup my whole career, and then there was some years where I thought that's it. I'll never. I'm done. I don't know if I'll ever make another team. And now I'm in a, a spot where I've got a really good chance. Like this is this is whether I make the team or I don't make the team. It's going to be if I don't make the team. It's I, I feel like I'll be in the conversation regardless. So I'm excited. Um, I'd love. I would love more than anything to have a Ryder Cup win in, in my resume. So I, I would love to be on this team. It's full of such unbelievable players. Um, something that I'm definitely trying hard for. How do you kind of go about the rest of your season having that in the back of your mind? Do you think about it? Do you try to ignore it? Just keep playing better? Or how do you approach that? It's really, it's very difficult because stuff like the Ryder Cup and stuff like that can make you play worse because you're trying so hard the, the key is to not try hard which is it's it's strange because you're always told try your heart you know push 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 but in golf you have to let it come to you so you try your best to to not think of it but it'll pop into my mind it, it, it popped into my mind on Sunday on, on the course um, you know you just got to do your best to try to I mean these things are good these are good worries to have mm-hmm, definitely do you have a favorite Ryder Cup story that you like to tell people? Yeah, I mean, the Ryder Cup at Medina, I was one of the first groups out and I was driving to the course at like 5.30 in the morning, it was pitch dark. And you drive by the 17th hole at Medina and, you know, it, it's pitch dark. There's, it's hours and hours and hours, but maybe five, six hours before any players would be going through there. And I drove by the, the hole and the grandstand behind the hole was completely full of, of spectators. And it was, it was a jaw dropping moment because it kind of hit me how serious this is. And, um, it's just the energy and the passion at Ryder Cup is unbelievable. And your experience in the team rooms that you've been in, who kind of relishes that environment the most um, out of the players that you shared Ryder Cup teams with? Well, I mean, a lot of the guys that I played on these Ryder Cup teams are gone now. They're, you know, they're all much older. So this, this Ryder Cup team is, is a, is a whole new batch of guys, a whole new, younger, um, to totally different vibe. So I, I haven't been in team rooms with a lot of these guys. I've been in a few with Jordan Spieth, but mm -hmm. other than that, I was on a couple of teams with Zach Johnson you know, now that he's a captain, but for the, for the most part, these are, this is a whole new team that I would be a part of. Got it. Um, so we have to ask, obviously, with the recent announcement of Live and PGA Tour kind of coming together with this new alliance, the Saudi PIF, um, what are your kind of thoughts on the whole thing? Obviously, you've been playing really well, and but the future of the PGA Tour is a little bit uncertain right now. What what are you what's going through your mind about it all? Well, I personally have a ton of faith in Jay Monahan, and I, I hope he's okay. Um, but I have faith in Jay Monahan, and I know he's doing what's best for us as players uh, uh, for the PGA Tour. And to, to be perfectly honest, I don't know much about anything that's going on. I don't think a lot of people do. And even the people that are in charge, I think, are still working this out. And I think everybody's going to make the best decision for what's best for golf and for the PGA Tour. And I just have to sit back and have faith in those people making those decisions. Yeah, totally. You, you've you spoken a bit about how a bunch of your friends went and joined. Yeah. And so are you in a way a little bit glad that this came together so quickly and that the, the possibility of you guys playing on the same tour again is is definitely 
a thing. Yeah, I mean, listen, I have one of my best friends plays on the live, and I, I, I want what's best for for him. I don't want him to be out of a job or you know whatever the case is. So I, I just hope it works out. You know, I'm a PGA Tour player, so I want the top PGA Tour to to do the best that it can. So I'm rooting for the tour. And, uh, but I just want, you know, I just want what's best for, for us as players. And listen, I've, I've benefited a lot from the live, just from how the purses have increased um, and stuff like that. So we'll see how it unfolds over the next, you know, five months or whatever it's going to be. Awesome. Keegan, thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you. Congratulations again. Good luck this week. Thank you so much.